The prophecy said that Fenrir, Loki's wolf son, would be a great threat to the god Aesir. Based on that, the Asgardian gods put him under constant surveillance. The wolf grew day after day, a source of concern for the Asgardians, except Tyr, who befriended Fenrir. They concluded that the animal had to be imprisoned. The Asgard deities forged powerful chains in an attempt to imprison Fenrir, and to hide their real intentions, the gods presented a challenge to the wolf. Fenrir, although immense and evil-natured, was still a cub and enjoyed playtime. The Asgardians challenged him to get rid of the god-made chains, and Fenrir liked that quest. The gods chained him, but those mighty chains failed to withstand the wolf. A new chain had to be made, and even more powerful than the first one, which was also placed on Fenrir. The wolf used his enormous strength, but the chain seemed strong enough to contain the colossal wolf. The gods looked at each other pleased, but they did not expect what took place immediately after. Fenrir used even more of his strength and ended up destroying the chains. The gods were bewildered by the wolf's sheer strength, and Fenrir noticed the Asgardian concern, a sign that they were up to something. No rope or chain managed to withstand the creature's strength, but Odin knew that if there was anyone of making such an object, these could only be the doors. Odin ordered the elf Skirnir to go to the land of the doors and ask them to make something that could imprison the wolf. The doors agreed and sent the list of ingredients needed for such an object. These ingredients were quite unusual, for instance, mountain roots, bear tendons, a woman's beard, the breath of a fish, the saliva of a bird, and finally, the sound of a cat's footsteps. With all those ingredients gathered, the doors started their work. The Asgardian gods were given a thin rope that looked as if it were made of silk, but the power contained in it did not match its appearance. Fenrir was yet again challenged to attempt to break these new harnesses, but the wolf was already suspicious, and upon seeing the rope that the gods were carrying in their hands, he thought that something mischievous was taking place. Odin assured the wolf that it was nothing but a simple joke. However, the wolf and Odin never got along, being Loki's son. Fenrir could smell the lie in Odin's breath. The wolf said he would only engage in that game if any of the gods had the courage to put his hands inside the wolf's mouth while he was being tied up. If he sensed an attempt to deceive him, he would devour the god's hand right away. The gods looked at each other, and this only raised the wolf's suspicions. But Tyr, the god who always fed Fenrir, with whom he had established some kind of friendship, offered himself to put his hand inside the wolf's mouth. Then, Fenrir agreed to be tied again. The wolf struggled against these new straps, but his full power could not break the dwarf made mighty rope. Fenrir noticed the god's satisfaction and looked at Tyr, who was the only one who did not look happy. The wolf realized that he had been betrayed by the gods and even by his only friend. Fenrir clenched his jaw strongly, tearing Tyr's hand off. The god withstood the pain without a single cry. The brave Tyr was celebrated for his sacrifice. Fenrir had been firmly tied to a stone. The Asgardian gods were finally relieved to have neutralized such a threat. The wolves shrieked angrily, insulting the gods, saying that he might have become friends with the gods, but because of such betrayal, they would now be his greatest enemies. Fenrir swore to look for Odin on the battlefield during Ragnarok to have his revenge.